When dad first entered the ministry, he was, of course, a young pastor, and he went to make a visit at a senior's home. And as he's walking along the, the sidewalk to enter into the senior's home, there's a seven-foot fence, and he heard on the other side of the fence a loud ruckus going on, real celebratory sounding, and, and they were chanting, five, 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 five. He was intrigued by this. Curious what this was all about. He tried peeking over, but couldn't really see over that fence. And then he noticed there was a little, little peephole down at the bottom. And so it was quite low, so he had to get on all fours. And he went down there, and he put his eye right to that hole. And he tried to see what the commotion was about. And after about two seconds, a stick came right through and poked him in the eye. <laughs> he went flinging backwards, and he was on his back. And then he heard the sound, six, 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 six. I'm a pastor's kid, and so I had stories told about me when I was a kid. So I'm getting back, maybe embellishing a little bit on some of these stories. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from the one who died for you and for me and who rose to life on the third day, never to die again. A few weeks ago, our family watched a movie. It was a mystery, mostly family-friendly. And as the story unfolded, we all were wondering who had done the crime. At the pivotal moment, there was a series of flashbacks, things we had already seen take place in the movie. But in revisiting the flashbacks, we realized that we had watched all of it unfold through the wrong lens. It wasn't that we were seeing it incorrectly necessarily, we just weren't seeing the whole picture. We were engaged in an entirely wrong narrative. Mary Magdalene thought she was living in a tragedy, and for good reason. She was expecting to anoint a lifeless body. She was looking for a dead Jesus. She feared a stolen corpse until the questions came to her. Woman which was a term of endearment. Why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Those two questions come to every human heart throughout the ages. Why are you crying? Why are you grieving? What losses have you suffered? And who is it you're looking for? What motivates you? What compels you? At your core, what do you most long to find? We can silence the questions. We can ignore the questions, but we're meant to embrace these questions. These Easter questions hold the potential to send us on a quest. Mary thought the story ended with her rabbi absorbed by death. Little did she know. He swallowed up the grave with his life. Mary feared that Christ's body had been stolen, carried away by the gardener. Little did she know the body was taken by the gardener because the gardener was Jesus. Have you ever felt like you were living in the wrong story? John's entire gospel brings the Jesus story into surround sound, multi-dimensions, so that we end up saying, whoa, I had no idea. John begins his gospel with these words, in the beginning. He takes the reader back to Genesis. And just like in Genesis where we read there were seven days of creation, in John's gospel, we're to see the under-the-surface message that John is writing about. In John's gospel, there are seven signs that Jesus performs. There are seven I am statements that Jesus speaks of. All of them are full of meaning and story and history. In Christ, God was doing a new thing. The moment Mary saw the gardener for who he really was, hearing her name spoken, all the signs, all the statements, all the flashbacks. It was, like, it was like seeing for the very first time. It was like Hagar being found in the wilderness by the angel of the Lord, being asked, 
Hagar, where have you come from and where are you going? It was like Moses encountering the burning bush, hearing his name spoken. It was like Elijah, who was fleeing and in a cave, hearing the voice come from the still, small voice, asking him, Elijah, what are you doing here? Mary's encounter was Inauguration Day, the start of something entirely new. In the beginning. When Jesus spoke, he would often cast an image. He would share a story, speak a parable, a metaphor. Allow me to speak as Jesus spoke and cast an ancient image, maybe in a new way. Let's call it John's eighth sign or Christ's eighth I am. We started our Lenten pilgrimage 40 days ago, the Garden of Gethsemane, on Ash Wednesday. The garden, the grove, the orchard, Gethsemane simply means oil press. We're here this morning at another garden, where Joseph of Arimathea provided the tomb for Jesus' body. Now here's the image, the flashback. Most of us, many of us, remember as a kid learning about the story of Noah and the flood. And if we didn't hear about it as kids, it's probably found its way into our cultural lexicon. Noah and the flood on the boat with his family. Could you imagine days and nights wondering if this storm is as good as life can get? Days and nights doubting if the storm and sea would ever let up. Most of us are too familiar with the storms of life. Unsure if we can hold out through another night of rain, another day of disappointment, another dashed hope. G.K. Chesterton said it best. We're all in the same boat in a stormy sea, and we owe one another a terrible loyalty. We wonder when will the storm stop, as did Noah. And then he sent out a test. He sent out a dove to see if it would return. If it didn't return, he would know that it was landing on earth. He released the dove, and the dove came back with an olive leaf in its beak. There was hope. Olives don't grow on high elevations. This was a sign of life, not up on the highest of heights, but on the depths of the earth. The olive leaf. It was the first sign that a whole new world existed off the boat. A new creation was out there, waiting to be seen and walked on and experienced. Somewhere off the boat, there were olive trees, a different reality than that of boat and seas and storms. For Mary, for the disciples, and for us, Jesus is the olive leaf. He's the sign of all signs, John's eighth sign. Metaphorically, poetically, we can say, Jesus spoke the eighth I am statement. I am the olive leaf. Returning from the other side of death's stormy door, what we've waited for, looked for, longed for, has found a place in our lives. This was not a near-death experience where Jesus would have to die again like Lazarus or Eutychus or Jairus' daughter. Death could no longer touch him. This morning, we're stepping off the boat because the olive leaf has come. The kingdom of God, a whole new reality, a whole new life has found its way into our realm. We pray for it often. Your kingdom come here, now, on earth, through us. So we lean and live into it. Jesus calls us siblings and his God and Father, our God and Father. It's not only what Jesus said and did, it's also how he did it. In a garden, starting with Mary, giving space for her eyes and her heart to adjust to this new reality. To see this beautiful reality, entirely different story than what she thought she was living. Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Have you ever thought you were living in the wrong story? 
What are your losses? Who are you looking for? The artist who wrote the song Louder Than Words writes in such a way that really all of it, all the lyrics are, are questions. And they're questions that are also meant for us. Whether you're reading the Bible or the events in the world or simply even your own life story, we're to read it and see it all differently. With all of leaf in hand and heart, a kingdom that cannot be corrupted, diminished, shaken, because it's irrepressible. It happened, and it's happening. If anyone... If anyone is in Christ, they're a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Apparently, one of God's subversive ways for the news of this olive leaf in our midst is for it to travel through lives to other lives. Mary Magdalene was the first apostle to the apostles with the message. The goodness and the beauty of the olive leaf named Jesus is meant to be carried, inhabited, embodied, incarnated through vessels like, like us. This was a picture this past fall of the Camino. I was in Spain here at this time. Uh, Steve is in the middle. He's trying to look taller than he actually is. And yeah, he lives in Chicago. Andrew lives in California. We took this picture before we were to ascend one of the highest mountains that we were walking on the Camino. Uh, what's interesting about this is that 30 minutes after this photo, we ran into another Canadian. And it was the only Canadian I met on the whole trip. And that, that day was Canadian Thanksgiving. So we met Jennifer. She was from Toronto. And when I found out that she was Canadian, I said, Happy Thanksgiving. And uh, she was surprised that somebody knew of Canadian Thanksgiving. And so we began to walk with her a little ways. Uh, she quickly opened up to us and let us know that her husband had died three years prior in a tragic motorcycle accident. And she began to just kind of pour out her heart. And then after a little bit, she, you could kind of tell it was a bit of a hesitation in her demeanor. And she said, I, I don't know if you guys believe in spiritual things. And uh, <laughs> Steve said, well, you're talking to three pastors. <laughs> so he said, yeah, we, we believe in spiritual things. Here's the thing in the kingdom of God. We can never know for sure when the gardener we're talking to or the prisoner or the poor, or the hospitalized, the sick, is actually Jesus. And, and we can never know for sure when the pilgrim we encounter needs to see and hear the olive leaf, which is us. 
We're characters in a story bigger than what we expect. This eighth sign is that the new world is not only possible, it's here. It's arrived. I don't know what cages you might be facing or what stories you're living in, but the olive leaf comes to us this morning to the table of hope. We're partakers and we become participants of a whole new life, a whole new story. All it took for Mary was for her to hear the the sound of her name being spoken by this gardener, for her to realize it was Jesus. She knew Jesus was the only one who could look at her life's past and see the story yet to be written. Our lives need not be shackled to the past or by the past. So come to the table to receive the olive leaf, the body and blood of Jesus. Come to hear the gardener speak your name, Christ himself. To have whatever cages or fears or concerns you come with exposed and removed so that you and I become an eighth sign of this abundant life. Christ's life still speaks louder than words. Amen.